<laughs> the rattle ball baby toy. Let's make one today. Welcome to Good Knit Kisses. We're all about helping you stitch your love and love your stitches. To get a copy of the pattern, click on the link in the description below. This rattle ball baby toy is so cute and it's nice and squishy and you can add a jingle or add some crinkle paper, whatever you'd like to do. We are working with uh, two colors of Red Heart Chic Sheep, which is a number four weight yarn, working with 35 yards of each color. Contrast A, I've got over here, is in color linen, which is an off-white, and color Mai Tai, which is uh, the color B, which is uh, kind of a, a, coral, a bright coral color. And the ones that I'm showing in the pattern go with this picture up here. The white color is called Lace, and the uh, dark blue color color is called VIP. Now I do direct you to use a butterfly bobbin and I've got uh, instructions on how to make one of those and it's because we are working with this half Latvian braid and um, it's really because you're going to be twisting together some stitches and it works really well to do that. This is a great project for some scrap yarn that you may have. You're also going to need a US size eight needle or five millimeter. You can uh, use a, um, a straight needle or circular, it doesn't matter, it is worked in a flat panel. And the gauge is five stitches and 10 rows an inch in garter stitch. We're gonna go through all the skills that you need in here uh, as far as the half Latvian braid and the construction, but you should know how to knit and purl before you begin and obviously casting on and binding off. We will go through some of those things, but there is more uh, in the uh, link down below if you need some slower tutorials. All right, let's jump right into the construction. We're going to cover five main elements in this video. We'll have an overview of the construction and what those parts are in the pattern, and also showing how to add on stitches after this first bottom square, potential hang up areas for problem spots that may not be apparent when you first read the pattern, also the start of the Latvian braid, and also sewing and stuffing the toy when you put in your little jingle bell and stuffing it up. All right, let's begin. All right, so this is the construction here, and you can see that it's worked as a flat panel in mostly garter stitch, and we've got two colors. We've got color B and color A. The main prominent color A is the main rectangle, and uh, B are the accent uh, bands and also the main squares here. The first square we're calling the bottom square because that's the part that knits up first, and then we have a top square up here because, of course, that's the last one that we did, and it's at the top of our, our drawing on our paper and also right here. The main square right here is the one that has this Latvian braid on it with these little color accents. Okay, so when you make your cast on, you want to make sure and leave this as a long tail. And if you forget, you can always make a longer tail um, by just adding this later. But this is the part that's going to get sewn up along the side of the main rectangle. You're just sewing the edges of the square against this side of the rectangle. And then on the opposite side, you're sewing these parts of the square against this part of the rectangle. And then of course the rectangle from here and here get connected together. And we'll go over that at the very end of the video. Okay, so the next part that you see after you do the bottom square, you change colors and then um, work across all the stitches and then add on the stitches. So we'll show how to add on the stitches, but I wanna point out, see how it's a little bit loopy? That's okay, it's actually going to get sewn in later on. I just don't recommend a thumb cast on or some kind of half hitch or something. So um, you're gonna be working a knitted cast on or a cable cast on, which is perfect for adding stitches after you've already worked some. Then uh, I'm going to show you a potential hazard spot here um, because if you're just going along and knitting everything, you'll you'll mess this part up and then the wrong color will show through. So we're going to go over that part here. You don't see it, but it actually stops becoming a garter stitch and we actually knit a few rows. And actually when we change color, we're going to change color and purl. So we'll go over that too. And it sets it up correctly for this Latvian braid. And then it gets repeated again up here. And then when you get down to the end, I assume you pretty much know what you're doing when we work a few stitches and then we bind off. Actually, we bind off and then we work a few stitches. And then we need to change colors again and it does a similar thing as to down here where we are just purling in this next color and then working the end of our um, last uh, square. 
but you can see here it looks a little bit more elongated and not that true uh, garter stitch and it won't really matter in this toy because it's just a toy all right so let's get moving and I'm going to show you on how to uh, add in the stitches to the bottom of this right here see you soon all right, so the bottom square, we're gonna leave a long tail, uh, about two yards and to pull out and start your slip knot. And then you're going to cast on 13 stitches. And uh, I'm not gonna spend any time going over some of the basics on here. Uh, so just go ahead and cast on 13 and then you'll start working your row one for uh, 27 uh, rows. So uh, you knit one row and then repeat that uh, 26 more times. And uh, if you want a slower video, and you can also check out the two-tone uh, baby booty video uh, to learn how to do that. And we have a right and left-handed version of that as well. So uh, go ahead and make your uh, 13 stitches. And once you do, um, knit out 27 rows. Uh, pause your video, and I will see you there. All right, we've repeated row one 26 more times, and we're just going to cut a tail here. And uh, if you have a hard time telling, you can count how many ridges there are, and there are 14. So you can count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and all the way up to the top is 14, and your tail is over on this side. And we're ready to start adding in uh, color A, or contrast A. So go ahead and set uh, color B to the side, and grab A. All right, so I'm going to hold my yarn over this way. My ball is on this side over here. I'm going to hold my tail back here and just start adding in uh, the color. So you can add it in however uh, you like to do it. And I'm going to show you how to weave in this little tail as we go. Okay. So we're just going to knit the first stitch. And we're just going to knit to the end of all these stitches. So we knit that first stitch, tighten that up. And now when we go into the second stitch, I'm going to work this tail in as we go. So I'm just going to put the yarn over this needle here. And it's just, it's going actually the opposite way as I normally yarn over. Like, see how this one's going the other direction? And then what I do is I let that now go, and it traps it on the back side of this yarn. And then I just knit the stitch as usual, just like that. And now I'm going to knit the next stitch with my yarn. And it locks in this tail into the back. Let's do that again. We're gonna knit this first stitch here, put the yarn over here with the B, color B, and knit the stitch with A, and pull it on through, and then let that go. And then now knit with A, without yarning over in B, and you knit the stitch. So um, you can back that up, or there's a little bit of a slower version on uh, this video here for the slipper. And then when you think you've got that all trapped in nice and well, you could just let go of that uh, other tail and continue knitting across. So go ahead and pause your video as you need and get to the end of these 13 stitches. I'll meet you there. Okay, so now that you've got to the end of your 13 stitches, you're gonna turn it over and we're gonna start uh, adding in our yarn here. So we want to add in stitches by, or cast down stitches by um, casting on in a knit stitch, or you can also use a cable cast on. Let's show you how to do the knit stitch. So we're going to uh, insert just as if to knit, we're gonna yarn over, and then we're gonna twist this yarn. We're gonna pull that yarn up, and then we're gonna twist it over like that. So I'm just twisting it this way. And then we're gonna insert our needle that's been holding all these other stitches into this lone stitch over here. Okay, so just insert right in there, and that creates one stitch. Let's do that again. Go into the first stitch, yarn over as if to knit, pull through a stitch, and then twist, and then insert our opposite hand into that stitch, and let go. So all the new stitches end up over here. Okay, I'm gonna do one more, just like that. Now, if you want to do the cable cast on, you can actually insert your free needle in between the first and second stitch. And you go under both of them completely. See that? And you do the same thing. You just yarn over, you pull up a stitch, and then you twist it, and then insert and let it go. And that will be a cable type stitch. You don't have to do both. Just do one or the other. 
in fact, don't do both, just do one or the other. So go ahead and cast on. Here you're gonna cast on 37 more stitches for a total of 50 stitches. All right, continue that, pause your video, and we'll meet back up for the next part. All right, after you've cast on all of your stitches, of course, you'll have more than this. This is just a small version. I've got 30 stitches here, but you'll want 50 to go all the way to the length of your rectangle. And you're gonna start working back this direction. Now, you're already on the wrong side when you begin. When you work back, you're just gonna be knitting the stitches across, and that is row three, knit all. And then you're gonna repeat that three more times. Now, when you um, knit this whole row over here, when you come back, you can certainly do that little technique of weaving in that tail that's fine but you're just gonna be working on this part here and when it comes to knitting these they're going to be just like when you originally cast on you've got these smaller stitches to deal with uh, and it's gonna feel a little bit different um, but just knit them like you normally do of a cast on and it might feel a little bit looser here so just knit across and you're gonna be working four rows of knit rows and then we're gonna meet back up at what I call the potential problem spot. That's this part right up here. It doesn't look like it, um, but you'll see why in just a moment. So pause your video, continue knitting your rows, and I will see you there. All right, we're at the contrast color band area, which is right here, and it's right before the Latvian braid. And what's important about it is we've got this yarn hanging down, and we want to make sure that the yarn stays in the right direction for contrast A because we're going to twist it up when it gets to this point. We've got to keep the yarn on the correct side and make it still look like a garter stitch and change our color so that it doesn't have a color peeking through on the right side. It would just look wrong. So we are on the wrong side here and we want to start row four by purling so that on the right side the color comes in correctly. So we're going to pick up color B, leave A on here, okay, and we're just going to be uh, purling. So I put my tail here and I'm working throwing or American style, English style, all the same thing. You can hold yours however works for you and I'm going to uh, purl this first stitch with B, okay. And that's all I'm doing. And I'm going to purl the next several stitches. And then I'm going to go ahead and tug on this uh, contrast A just to get my gauge right because it's a little loose. Here we go. Okay, so that's all we're doing is we're just purling across. That's pretty easy. And then when we come back, we actually need to purl across again. And we'll be set up on the correct side with these two strands next to each other to twist for the Latvian braid, and that's the next part. So go ahead and purl two rows in contrast B, and pause your video, I'll meet you back up for the Latvian braid. See you soon. Okay, we're ready for the half Latvian braid. You've got your two colors on one side. We are on the wrong side here, and we will be knitting. I want to show you um, what happens if you do not twist it uh, in the same direction every time. I've actually got a sample here where um, I did all the twisting correctly, and then um, I think I put my work down, and then I actually end up uh, twisting the next stitch wrong and so then I just kept going in that same direction and actually changed directions on that which is kind of a cool effect if you want to go one way here and then one way up top uh, but I want you to know that um, twisting it consistently and staying um, keeping this one row going all in the same sitting is important to keep it uh, consistent so go ahead and set your uh, tail aside so you don't grab that one and you want to work by grabbing the uh, yarn that's underneath, which is A. And we're going to knit that first, and it'll trap in a B over here. So we're just going to start by knitting A. Okay, so it's grabbing it from underneath yarn B. And just knitting. Okay, and now we're going to drop A, and we're going to grab B from underneath A. So I'm just going to grab B and knit. And now I'm going to drop B. I'm going to grab A from underneath B and knit. And do that again. Drop A, grab B from underneath, and knit. And you can see on the wrong side here, actually it's the right side, on the other side you can see it start to twist up. Okay, and you're actually doing this. So after we knit a few more, you'll be able to see it a little bit better. Let me get a few going here. One more, okay. 
So don't look at this top part up here. You're going to look at this part here. See how that's twisting? All right, and then it appears between two pearl bumps. That's what it looks like, and that's because we set that up right on the row before. So you just keep going. It is going to twist up your yarn. So if you want and you've got your um, bobbin that you made made with all the yarn that you may have separated earlier, um, you can move that or you can move the ball of yarn back and forth. Uh, that way it doesn't get twisted or you'll just have to untwist it later. It is only for one row. So continue working this, grabbing from underneath and don't set down this, um, this uh, row until you've completed it. That way you um, continue uh, twisting all in the same direction. All right, pause your video and I'll meet you at the end of there for the next part. See you soon. To finish out the Latvian braid, it actually works on the next row, which is row seven. Go ahead and make sure and twist when you work the next row. You want to twist this color one more time to get the yarn to line up correctly. Otherwise, you kind of lose this last part of the rope. So we're going to be working with contrast B again for two more rows. So twist B from under A to begin. And that's not written in your pattern, but it's um, it's a good practice to do. So we're just going to go ahead and knit across in color B all the way across. And you can see how that is now locked in here. And then uh, pause your video after you've knit two rows, and then you can go ahead and cut B. And you'll be done with B until we begin again up here, which is the exact same thing. So you're going to work two rows, which is row seven and eight in B, cut it, and then you're going to pick up this one here, A, and you're going to knit this middle section. So you're going to be uh, working uh, a, a knit row about 13 times, and then you'll begin this Latvian section one more time, and I'll meet you back up when you get to this point. All right, pause your video, and I'll see you there. Okay, so you've uh, made the middle section and one more Latvian braid, and then you're going to work four more rows of A. Now you can see I've only done an abbreviated amount because I don't need a big sample for myself, but this is where you start binding off these stitches. And so all you do here is you just start binding off just a basic bind off, knit the first two stitches, and then lift the first one over the second one, and then move on and do that until you have 13 stitches uh, total left. So um, you'll uh, work all the way until you actually have 12 over here because you'll still have one hanging on here from the last bind off. So knit until you have 13 stitches and then knit the remaining stitches on the row and you'll just cut it and then to start this next one the only difference here is you'll do just like you did at the beginning of the Latvian you're going to add on in contrast B uh, in purl and then the remainder is just knitting and garter stitch and then you already know how to bind off and so you'll bind off after you do um, 26 more rows of knit stitch so you'll do a purl row to add on the color uh, where he's actually working in this direction because it'll be purled and adding in that color there and it'll show up knit and then work um, it's actually 27 rows of knit and bind off then you leave a nice long tail and we will seam that up together all right pause your video and I'll see you when you're ready to sew it and stuff it see you soon All right, so you have bound off and left a long tail for seaming. And uh, you want to weave in all the little smaller tails everywhere and go ahead and wash and block this. And I've got a video down below you can see on washing and blocking. Blocking usually helps you even out the stitches and everything, but in this case, we wanna wash it so that we can um, have a nice clean toy for baby. So you're just gonna wash it in mild detergent and water, squeeze out the excess, maybe press it in a towel, and lay it out, flip it um, every um, hour or so until it's completely dry, and then you can start seaming it together. Okay, so in the beginning, if you've made a nice long tail, that's great. And if not, if you forgot, you can go ahead and um, work this short tail in to the back here and then start a new tail. And if you have to start a new tail, you can choose to put it where uh, you had this uh, short tail or you could even put it, uh, say, in the corner right here because we're going to actually be stitching the sides of this uh, square to this long side here of the rectangle. And the same thing happens up here as well. So I'm actually going to do that now. And it's the same technique So if you um, for stitching. So if you decide to use the, the tail 
placement here, that's fine. Um, I will cover all the stitches that you need for sewing this in. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and sew in or weave in this tail here just so you see how I do it. And I'm just going to weave it in on the wrong side of the fabric. And I'm using a duplicate stitch method. And I've got a slower video on this, so we'll link to that as well. I'm just going to go down through a few stitches and then come around through uh, this little smile here and then this little frown up here. Um, we're just going to go around the stitch here and then up and go around the stitch up here. And we're just zigzagging around these stitches and it just matches it. It's called the duplicate stitch method. And so once you have a few of them in there, uh, you can um, just go ahead and leave that long tail there or snip it off. Uh, the last one you can come through and kind of split some yarn and it stays put very well. And that's the best way to weave in and garter that I think. Okay, and so now I'm just gonna get my other tail and we're going to be attaching it on the inside here. But before we do that, let's go ahead and match up our edges. Now, I found that having some removable stitch markers works really well for this. Now, this side of the square is going to match up with this line here, so you can bend it and fold it and go ahead and put in a stitch marker here. And then I go ahead and come all the way around to this other side over here and you can match up this end with this end because these two sides are going to get put together. So we can put these two together and hold it and pinch it and then kind of follow along the line and then I know that that corner is going to meet about right here which is just right because this lines up with the square here and just put my other little stitch marker in here. Okay and then that way when I start stitching along here, I can know um, about where my um, stitches need to be matching up so I don't get uh, too short with one and long with the other. Okay, so we're just going to spin it around to this sort of inside corner. here, trying to miss the ridge stitches here. We want to keep the two ridges up at the top pretty consistent where we're not um, putting our accent yarn color through them uh, because we want to make the top and the bottom look the same and when it comes down here we're just going to be going through uh, these edge stitches here so this is just more for consistency uh, alright so we're going to come through um, these top stitches here and then the side of this garter stitch right underneath this ridge this first ridge here make sure to go through two stitches up top and pull through and make a tail and then on the corner here we're just going to go through the same stitches again and secure that and it's good to go through the corners a couple of times just to have a nice secure and uh, straight uh, corner okay all right now we're going to go along the edge here and you're going to do the same thing you're just going through the other top stitches uh, right where you cast it on, there should be two stitches going that direction. So you're going to grab those two and go up through where the next ridge is. There's two stitches on the side here of the garter stitch right below the ridge and just come up through there. And you just continue going in that same spot along here. Just uh, put in your stitches evenly until you get to the corner. Let's go through another one. Here's another set of two and then a ridge. And then you've got these little whip stitches along the edge here. There's another set. Let me move this over so you can see it. Here's another set of two and then a ridge. All right, there we go. And you can see uh, the uh, two ridge stitches here or ridges right here evenly. Okay, continue going along and uh, meet me back up at uh, this corner, uh, actually this corner right here, and I'll show you how to go along the um, bind off or actually cast on edges. It'll be the same as when you come down here. So we'll go through those stitches together. See you in a moment.
All right, so I'm on this corner. I've removed that stitch marker and I went ahead and connected uh, the end here with that, that stitch marker again. There is a little bit of an overlap with my white. I'm making it just a little bit longer because uh, these uh, seams are gonna kind of be put together a little bit. So that's okay. Just wanna show you that for a second. You can see these stitches uh, looking all nice and consistent. And I've gone through this corner here and now we're going through the same stitches on the uh, bottom that we've done, this, the edge of this rectangle with the cast on stitches. But now we're coming up through this side of the these V stitches on the side here. This is where we had our cast on. So we're still coming up through two stitches on the square. And again, I'm going through the corner a couple of times just to make sure it's nice and uh, squared off. And uh, then we're gonna go through the next stitches. And then this little V. And that's it. Uh, it's basically like you just did on the other one, except uh, you're going through um, all these little V stitches. And if you need to, you can skip um, uh, skip one of the V's uh, over if you have to. If you got to kind of um, uh, make sure this is nice and even, uh, you may have a few more of uh, these right here than you do the um, the V's. Uh, I'm just going to go through and eyeball what I think is pretty even, and um, I may make adjustments along the way. It's okay to um, grab a spot down here and have to maybe go through uh, the same V twice over here just to get it lined up. Um, that's called um, easing the fullness uh, in, a, in sewing. Okay, so you're gonna continue going along until uh, you get down to the end here. Pause your video and I'll meet you back up for the next phase. See you soon. Through this last stitch and I actually end up coming up through uh, underneath this garter on this edge here. And so now we're going to work the uh, side of the box here, the uh, closing the side. And um, you can, before you move on, if you wanna look at this, inspect it, make sure it looks nice and square and the stitches are straight, this is the time to do it. And you can also kind of pull on these whip stitches and um, get it nice and even. This is the time to do that uh, because it's gonna be harder to do that later on. Uh, so just go ahead and go through um, this side here. And I'm just going through um, the top stitch and the stitch right underneath. So I've got one here and then one right here. So it's this row here and then the kind of the row uh, of the stitch that's kind of behind this garter ridge. And then I've come over and do the same thing over here. I've got this top stitch and then the stitch that's right behind it. And then I pull it up and then it closes that off. Okay, come over here and go to the next ridge and you can see where it just came up. We're gonna go through here and then this stitch right here and go over to the other side where I just was, and you can see going through there, and then that stitch there, and pull through, and then it pushes those two together, okay? So now you're gonna do the same thing uh, right here. It's a little different, just because we got that accent there, uh, but you can see where you came through last, just follow that down again, come up, and grab the two stitches, and let's see if I got them. Got one, two, and then grab these two over here. See where I came from? And grab these two stitches here. Actually, that's this one and this stitch. Okay, and then come back over to this side and grab these two stitches here and it's underneath the rope right here. And then go to the other side and do the same thing again. And you can see it pulling them together. It's a little messier, it's a little harder to see uh, where this little Latvian rope is, uh, but I just kind of pull the stitches aside and see where that yarn came out of and then I can find where I need to go next. And then I just do that. Okay, and then you can see how it's pulling uh, those two accents together. And then I just switch and come over to this white area here 
and do what I did before with the two stitches and these two stitches here and back and forth. And that's pretty much it. So you just continue stitching along that same direction. When you pull it together, it starts uh, cinching it together, kind of like magic. <laughs> you can see how it uh, starts pulling, making these garter stitches move together. And uh, that is my corner right there. Okay, so you're just going to keep going up until you get to the end of the little box here. And then you're going to get your polyfill like this and stuff it. So we'll do that next. See you in a moment. After you finish sewing up this part, uh, you're going to want to take your tapestry needle off and sew in this little beginning strand here. Now, if you left it long enough and you like that whip stitch look, you can finish out this stitch down here or add in some more. It's completely up to you. It's not necessary. Uh, so I'm just going to thread this back on my tapestry needle and uh, work my way inside. Okay, so we're going right inside the box. And I'm going to go around a few of these stitches and do what we've done before and just done a duplicate stitch. Oops. Okay. And I do want to make this one uh, sewn in because I don't want it to, um, I don't want to unravel or go anywhere. Uh, so I really want to go around all these stitches nicely because it does, um, connect the box with that whip stitch okay I'm gonna go ahead and clip that clip it you know long enough you don't need to clip it very short all right and then now we can start stuffing it so just take your polyfill and you can pull it apart in little pieces and it tends to uh, stuff it nicely and then um, go ahead and once you've got about um, half or three quarters full, you can add in your little jingle bell. And I like kind of lining it and making, making a little spot to place that jingle bell right in here in the middle. And then, um, then you want to put enough in the top so it kind of seals that up. And then this little flap is going to cover it. And you can fill as much or as little as you want. You can have it like really full or just uh, slightly squishy. It just depends on you. And then you can start um, sewing up most of this. And then when you get that last little part, you can take stuffing out or put more in uh, before you make your final uh, decision. If you want this to look more like a ball or more of a, um, a squarish shape. Okay, so you can just kind of play with it and squish it down, whatever you want to do. All right, so I'm going to continue uh, sewing mine. And uh, we've got two strands on here. This is the one where I finished. I can uh, sew this until I get to this strand and then continue with this strand. Uh, or um, if this was long enough, you can finish out the whole thing, clip this one. It's really just to make uh, it convenient for you if you didn't have enough uh, strands before uh, by having this nice and long. So this is completely up to you where you want to stop. You can weave in this end here and then take this one and go all the way around and even uh, make that little whip stitch here and cover up this little spot. Uh, that's totally up to you. Uh, so it's there for you if you like. So go ahead and finish uh, sewing this up and I'll meet you back to show you how to finish off the very last one and hide your seams in our, or your tails on the inside. Pause your video and I'll see you in a moment. Okay, so I finished the end here and you can see I actually where that area was I was suggesting you could put a whip stitch in. I went ahead and put that in. I worked along this side first, which was the back of where that flap was, and then the side here. And then I picked up with my long strand that I, from my uh, bind off and worked along here and here. And I actually added a little bit more of the stuffing inside. And now I could just um, stick this tail all the way through and pull it out another side and try and guide it to where I have some um, of this pink coming out or this Mai Tai color that I'm using, the contrast B color. Pull it through and then I'm going to come back down through this stitch and go in the opposite area, the other side, same color. 
And I'm not trying to pull in on the, the ball or anything, but um, it actually is just um, kind of stitching in a little bit of the stuffing and also kind of keeps my rattle in the middle. And I'm just gonna go through a couple more spots putting the rest of this tail in. And you could just do this until you have no tail left uh, or you can um, uh, decide to cut it at any point. Make sure I'm not uh, doing it too tight. Okay, and I think this is gonna be the last time I can pull it through. So I'll just find that needle, pull it on through. Oh, and there it is. And then when I tug on it, it just popped right back in my toy and I don't have to trim it. And there we have <laughs> the rattle ball baby toy. <laughs> Isn't that adorable? And you got your two cute little booty slippers and make a fun little gift or layout set for a friend or family member. Well, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial today. I hope you have a great day and happy knitting and crochet. Bye everyone. Thanks for joining us today where we help you stitch your love and love your stitches. See you again soon.